Okay. All right. So um, yes, I'm the project manager for the climate science data enhanced virtual laboratory. Now, Andrea, as the timekeeper, am I starting from ten minutes, or have I lost the minute? No, no. You're starting from ten now. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> It's taking its time to switch. <clears throat> It's working fine on my computer. Um, I'm not sure if it's the, the connection with Zoom. Yeah, it's not actually made it to us yet. I suspect Zoom's having trouble capturing your Chrome browser when you're going full screen. Or Chrome's complaining about having too many tabs up. That's not too many tabs. <laughs> Sorry, what was that bit? I, I can see the slides quite okay. Yeah, they're just, just do it like that. Yeah. Okay, all right. If you're happy to just do it like that. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's fine. Let's go with that. Okay. Well, then, you, yeah, all right. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly give you an overview, um, describe the scope of work um, that we're doing and why we're doing it, and um, talk about some of the challenges that um, that we will we know we're going to face that are just part of the, the project, and then a bit of a summary about what they all mean. Um, for those who are not particularly familiar with a lot of things in the climate community, there are a lot of acronyms. I will try to lighten that load as much as possible and um, uh, you know, explain them, but please feel free to ask me if I miss um, uh, explaining any because some of them are just like normal words to me. Um, okay, so um, as Robert also um, mentioned, um, you know, obviously we're one of the projects that are funded through the um, RDS and Nectar uh, Climate Devil Program. Um, we get our scope of the project confirmed in November um, and we're aiming for completion in October. As a project manager, I like to leave a little bit of leeway because of the inevitable, inevitable delays that um, that will that will occur in terms of both completing some of the technical things as well as um, just um, you know as far as I'm concerned, you know, getting that documentation up and and completed. So we're aiming for October, um, and it's a you know the similar arrangements with the um, equivalent in kind matching the um, that the funding from the, the partnership. Um, the work that we're doing builds on from the Climate and Weather Science Virtual Laboratory, which was a nectar funded project um, several years ago, and I was involved in that project when I worked at the Bureau of Meteorology. So I'm very excited to be um, doing this next, um, this next stage of, of work. Um, we should also acknowledge our project partners. Um, we're working with CSIRO, the Bureau, um, the um, Australian Centre of Excellence for Climate Streams. We used to have this, this um, the Centre of Excellence for Climate System Science, but that's now been replaced by CLEC. And, and they work within programs, the various science programs. You won't be seeing too much of NESP and ESCC further down, um, but they are programs of work that, the, that are very important to our, our project partners. So um, what motivates us to do this project? Um, through all the, um, the discussions prior to defining the scope of work, it became very apparent that for the climate community in the next couple of years, being able to contribute to the CMIP 6 the Coupled Model Intercomparison Project, A6, is um, their highest priority. So everything that we're doing in this project is um, aimed at enabling them to do that. The, the effort is in for this uh, for CMIP six is in two ways. It's in the model development, um, for example, access the access couple model two and access is not one I've spelled out there. It's the Australian uh, community, or you can see it written down the bottom there um, in my notes. Australian Community Climate and Earth System Simulator. It's the same acronym as is used for the Bureau's uh, numerical weather prediction modelling as well. So it um, goes over. The multiple scales um, and the other part of the effort is around the data management um, access to local and international um, data sets that are used for their analysis 
And it's in that second section that, um, that this project is going to focus. So why are we going to do it? Um, the outcomes we've defined and um, our, for the project are all, I won't go into them in detail because you, you can read them, but they're around the data access, they're about um, making sure that the climate community is in a, you know, the best position possible to contribute to, to CMIC 6 is to actually um, broaden access to the CMIC 6 data and climate data more generally so that um, the outcomes of all of that research can then go into subsequent research. And it's to um, make sure that the research community have got access to the tools and workflows that they need to actually complete their research in the most efficient way possible. Um, and a big part of that is the provision of the data management services that will support their activities both for the completion of the research and further on in the translation of that research, getting that information out to their, um, to their stakeholders and to the general community. So the scope of activities is, rather than talk about the specific deliverables of which we have eight, there's four main streams of work. One is, um, and they're in order of both effort and priority. The most important thing is um, the data, um, access to the CMIP 6 data, and um, also being able to publish the Australian data sets into the Earth System Grid Federation um, network as well. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with the Earth System Grid Federation, um, but it's an international collaboration talk about a little bit more in, in the next slide. Um, it's an international co collaboration of which NCI is what is one of the uh, lead nodes, a tier one node, and it's uh, designed for sharing data uh, around the world. Prior to CMIPS, uh, prior to ESGF, they used to use um, hard disks. So this is um, actually able, enabling people to download. Um, the other stream of work is getting access to those new tools, the new analysis tools, particularly those that are defined as being required by the, um, the WCRP. Um, improving access to the data while they're actually working um, on the research platform and NERDIC is the, the um, NCI's um, National Environmental Research Data Interoperability Platform, which is a term we use to bring together all of our data services and research platform. Um, and then the other key bit uh, is the user support with all the new tools and even with the, um, the, the new processes that will be introduced around data publishing and replication. We need to have um, good interaction with our community and as I'll talk about in a minute, we need to be able to keep them up to date with, with progress. So going into each of those in a little more detail, um, this data management and replication is actually the biggest effort for, from an NCI perspective, but it actually has the biggest reward for the community. Um, we're ex as a tier one node, we're expected to um, replicate uh, at least two petabytes, um, but we, through the demands of our community, demands them that they based on uh, what we they know that they they need from um, the global uh, the, the global CMIP six data sets. We're expecting at least three petabytes. As you can imagine, um, the, the research timelines often slip. So um, while we originally, in the earlier diagram there, there was a timeline of um, potentially expecting the first lot of data to come through in June this year, it's likely that we will see the majority of the data um, becoming available um, late this year or early next year with an expectation um, people can still meet their research timelines so we could well be in a situation where we're trying to download three petabytes of data in, in you know, less than six months. Um, that actually equates to quite a high download speed and that's why the work that we're doing is um, quite significant in terms of installing the ESGF software onto our data transfer nodes and being able to optimise that. Um, we can optimise it as much as we like at this end, but we can get constrained by the network. It's coming a long way, often from Europe and, uh, and the US, and we are sometimes constrained by the performance of the node at the other end that we're trying to transfer data from. So there's a lot of... A couple of minutes left. Okay. 
There's a lot of work um, to, for the international coordination to make that happen. And similarly, we've got software that we need to install to, um, to, for publishing the data. And that in itself um, has its own challenges. It's all open source software and it's sort of managed through a group of you know, collaborators without you know, anybody getting paid huge amounts of money to, to do the development of that. But it's a very interesting exercise um, to make it all happen. Just quickly around the software tools, these are the two ones that are required uh, for us to get access to. So we've actually been doing a bit of work to get these installed and we're going through an evaluation and user documentation process and looking to start doing some training on these tools in the next couple of months. Uh, the improved data access, we are going to um, integrate uh, the metadata attribute service, which was developed by NCI, with what is called the Archive API, um, which was developed by the, um, the, the climate community. And that's a little tool that they use to search the really vast data sets to get the variables that they want. In CMIP 5, um, it was found that the scaling the search just was almost impossible and really slow. So this is a way to, um, to help that to happen for them to find the variables that they want. It will also enable them to check whether or not we have that data locally, and if not, be able to um, initiate the replication process for us to get that um, downloaded from the ESGF. And then use of support and training, you can't um, introduce all of these new things, you can't have efficient processes and trying to meet really tight timelines unless you've got that engagement with the users that we've defined the processes that actually support their activities and that we have the training material to help them to make the most use of both the data and the software and tools. Um, so I can't, um, we can't complete this work without acknowledging our project team a, you know, very um, enthusiastic um, support from the CSIRO through the Toronto, the Bureau of Meteorology, from um, Aurel um, Moyes and Wilson Hansen, and through the um, climate community, um, sorry, through Claire, Claire Carouge and Palop Trillin, and um, NCI side, Kate Snow's our key person um, in engaging with the user community, and our technical teams, Chris Allen and Matt Nethery. So yeah, they're just doing an amazing job um, to get things to the state that we're at at the moment, which is we've just started to download um, the uh, doing our replication testing. And uh, we know that we've still got a bit of work to get those speeds up, but we've, we're lucky we've got <laughs> the, the research is running behind and that gives us a little bit longer to get that, those um, things optimised. Um, and so um, just in summary, the big focus of our work is to make the science efficient and reliable so our researchers can focus on their work. Um, you know, this, we're doing this mainly for, um, for CMIP 6. There are those challenges which I sort of uh, went through about the, um, the download of the massive data sets, as well as actually just having that storage available um, for, for them to access. Um, and the other part, the most important thing, I think, which is something that comes up from the climate community is that this project is scheduled to end in 2018. But the work we need to do will continue beyond that. Um, so we will be looking for additional funding in the future. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, 